welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. I was um, at this lovely theater here. Gets dark and the movie starts, and I thought, oh, great, it's a movie. I can just sit back. And I completely forgot that I have to give a talk. I would just love to sit here. So, um, again, thank you for the San Francisco Film Festival for. Um, inviting me to speak and to share some speculations on the future of where motion pictures are going. And um, my role, I think, is uh, a little bit of an outsider uh, to uh, describe what I see. And um, the way my, my, my method for doing this is um, very simple to, to, to come as an outsider. We're sitting here in a, in a fantastic movie theater, but in fact, more people see movies in airplanes than watch them in theaters. Airplanes and you know, portable DVDs. So, but the movies aren't made, usually, with that in mind. So what I'm trying to do is to uh, listen to the technology. Carver and Mead, a technologist, said, listen to the technology, see what it wants to say. And, and, and for the next 45 minutes, what I'm going to try and um, talk about is what I think the technology is telling us, the technology around moving pictures, motion pictures. And um, then we'll have a chance to have questions and answers, um, which I look forward to. And um, uh, hopefully, uh, I'll take you to a place that, that, I'm, that, that I think is one possible scenario. So first of all, you know, if, if I showed you a, an image of a screen, and I asked you, is that a, is that a movie show, being shown? Is it a... Um, a TV or is it gaming? We can't tell right now. It's actually very hard to tell because these things are kind of converging together. And what I wanted to talk about is the ways in which this media is sort of spreading into everything. So for a very long time, there were basically kind of two screens. We had a movie screen and we had TV. But what's happening right now is that it's starting to spread everywhere. So, so, so we're, we're, we're we're, we're seeing, seeing larger, larger and larger, larger screens. screens. At the same, same time, we're seeing smaller and smaller screens. And, and the screens are, are, are being distributed and they're being plastered uh, everywhere in our lives. So, so we, have we have things, things like, like um, you know, the iPod, but not just, just the iPod. iPod. You have yeah, other uh, little handhelds, handhelds that, that people are actually, much to my surprise, watching movies on. on. And um, not only movies, but in, in, in certain senses, in high-def movies. And what's interesting, interesting about the mobile phone, of course, is that it's two-way, is that most of them have cameras in. And in two years from now, Nokia says they're going to put a high-definition movie camera in a camera phone. So, so not only will it play movies, but it's actually going to film movies. And I'll come back to that later. So, so we see this sort of um, burst, this, 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 this sort of mushrooming, um, expansion, expansion of the screens, screens. and, and we, we see them everywhere, everywhere in our lives. We see them in the grocery stores, stores the checkouts. We see them, uh, of course, at airport waiting rooms, and I hear the, even in uh, the gas pumps and ATMs starting to have little screens. Anywhere we're waiting, there's there's there are screens, and so it's it's sort of just it's almost like a, a life force that's sort of penetrating, excuse me, into all the possible variations of the environment. And big screens, big screens at work, big screens, this is a, not a piece of wallpaper or chart, this is actually a big screen. And um, people are, are, are working in front of larger and larger screens at, at, at work with, with kind of a mid-distance, rather than sitting in the back room, they're kind of closer up. And of course, the Tom Cruise in Minority Report, where he's in front of this wrap around thing and he's gesturing, um, interacting with the screen. Um, and by the way, uh, when you have, you have different thoughts when you stand up and work than when you're sitting. And I think this is going to change the workplace a little bit as we have these kind of large screens. At the small end, there's these little tiny screens that are being put onto eyeglasses and eye frames and there's actually dozens and dozens of examples already. Um, these are just a couple where you actually have a personal movie screen in, in your eyeglasses. And in some cases, these are overlaid. Um, and we'll uh, come back to that, where you have an augmented and overlaid layer of a screen on top of the, your normal vision. But they're getting smaller. This is kind of like how small they can get. And this is how big they can get. 
This is in Shanghai and on, on, along the Boon on the other side, actually Pudong. And uh, we're seeing, you know, this is Times Square and beyond. We're seeing screens the size of buildings. And as LEDs become cheap, organic LEDs, they will start to cover larger, larger surfaces. And someday most buildings will probably have an outdoor display, change their skin, their color, particularly at night, maybe even during the day. So the screen is sort of unlimited in terms of what we can imagine. And the best way I think to imagine it is just imagine all surfaces in our lives becoming potential screens. These are some prototype personal projectors. They're little things about this big and they project. So when you don't have a screen, you can actually make a screen by carrying around one of these. Um, and so, so you, 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 you have your, your personal projectors. projectors. And, and at the, the other end, end if all, all these screens, screens here, here, you know, you know this, this is, is a state-of-the-art home theater. theater. <laughs> okay? So, so why, why do we, we go, go to, to, why, why do we go, go to theaters, theaters now? now? Because, because of, of the projection, projection and the sound system. system. But, but these guys, guys there's a whole um, little well, underground, underground um, fan uh, groups who, uh, hobbyists, hobbyists who make state-of-the-art or in, and, and even better home, home theaters, theaters and, and, and that's, that's ca kind of catching up, up although it never catches up with the state-of-the-art uh, uh, professional theatrical environments. environments. But, 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 you but you have, have to, ask to ask yourself, yourself will people in homes have as good of a, of a state as, uh, will, will they, will they go, go to theaters? theaters? Well, well, what's interesting about that is that in India and places like that, People, People go to the, the theaters. theaters. India, India and places where there's, there's you know, rife piracy. piracy, you can get, get any kind of a, a, a movie that you want for almost a dollar or less. Why, why do people go to the theaters? They go to the theaters because they're air conditioned. So they're buying air conditioning and get the movie for free. And I think, I think what's happening is that there's always something ahead and, and, and in, in the Western developed world, world that is probably gonna be 3D. So these home theaters I just showed don't have 3D. 3D, 3D is, is sort of the, the next thing, thing that wants to bring people into the theaters. And there's Dolby, there's a couple other companies, companies making it, and, and there are 60, 60 major features slated to be released in 3D, 3D in the next five years. So, so they're, they're betting, betting that this is something, something that will move people into theaters away from their very elaborate home theaters, where you can get, get almost anything you want uh, through Netflix, now Blu-ray. And, of course, the home theaters will catch up because this is a Samsung HD 3D TV going out on big screen. So, so always behind the, the theaters will be the home theaters trying to catch up but never quite catching up. So the other place that we see the expansion of movies and motion pictures as it expands into this universe is in time, is in, is, is in the duration. So, so long, long ago, ago, the time the slots, slots in which things were made were kind of dictated by the venues, by the distribution opportunities. opportunities. And, we and we had things, things like, like shorts, 15, 15 minutes or so. And we, we had, had commercials, commercials, which were kind of mini stories. And we had 90, 90 minutes on average for a, a movie. But what's, what's happening, happening now is, is, is that, that because, because the distributions are widening open, there are many, many more possibilities for the length of films. And so we see this kind of YouTube thing of two to four minutes just taking off. And we see longer and longer films in terms of serials, particularly those that have a um, continuous narrative, like um, Lord of the Rings was 12 hours. Well, I think we haven't seen the end, or I, sh I, should, sh I should say, I think we're seeing the beginning of a new era of extremely long films, like Lost. Lost is, is a, a when, when it's, it's done, done will be a hundred plus, plus hour movie. movie. It, it has, has a single story, story very complicated. complicated. In, In fact, fact, this is a diagram of one of the one, one of the episodes, episodes and all the uh, uh, fans around, around it. it. The complexities of these things challenge even the greatest novel. And so we haven't seen the how long some of the longest movies will be, and it's been developed because we have the ability to re rewind them, to, to restudy them, to see them at our own schedule. I mean, you can't play a 100-hour movie in the theaters. It's just impossible. But when you can look at them when you want, that makes these very long um, narrative stories possible. 
So there's another, there's another way in which uh, the motion picture is expanding its environment. And uh, I'll roughly say that, call this one um, quality. So at the one end, at the high end, we had, of course, the, the Hollywood produced, the professional, the state of the art, the, 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 the artesian masterpiece. And at the other end, we had home movies. And that was basically the range. You know, you either made home movies or you made really real movies. And um, what's happening, of course, is, is that we've opened this up, and I, and I don't list them, I'm just trying to say this is a continuum between the two ends. And so we have in the middle, this hard middle, of, of things that are being made by, um, the quality sort of in between. It's, it's more than a home movie, and it's less than uh, you know, a masterpiece. And that, there's a huge uh, range in there. There's a huge range in there. And um, it's not clear oftentimes what, what things are, because they're, what's really interesting is, is that we're coming up to the point where the tools used by the amateur and the professionals are basically the same. Um, we shouldn't, shouldn't be surprised, surprised by that because that's, that's what we have in writing. writing. I mean, uh, uh, writing, writing is, 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 we require some tools, but, but the, the tools, tools that, uh, that J.K. Rowling, Rowling uses is almost, are exactly the same as anyone West could use, and, and it's, it's all about what, what they produce. They produce. And, and I think, think you know, you for know, a long time, of course, the tools for making film were, were, were much different, and there will always be, you know, the more expensive, the most, the most state-of-the-art technology, but nonetheless, there's some level at which a basic, set of tools that, can, that you can use to make a presentable motion picture will be available to most everybody. And then the, the quality difference is, is really not tool-based or distribution-based, but really on the talents and skills and ambition of the artists. So this center area is really where most of the exciting work is happening in the future of motion pictures. There are only about 600 major uh, studio produced films made in a year. You know, there's billions and billions of these. It's the scale of, of quantity produced is startling. And in this area, more is different. It actually makes a difference when you have so many things being produced. I, I think one of the problems that TV had for a long time was that there wasn't enough bad TV. It, it was, was mostly, mostly mediocre. mediocre. The, 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 the problem, the, the cost of making it and the, and the distribution channels were so constrained that um, you couldn't, couldn't really make really, really, really horrible stuff, stuff because nobody would let you, you nobody would fund it. it. So, so most of it was made was sort of in the middle, middle mediocre. mediocre. And it also prevented um, anything from really great being made. And I think um, one, of the, one, one of the correlators to have really, really great stuff, you have to, you have to allow a lot of bad stuff, a lot of really horrible stuff. And so that's sort of what we're getting right now. And that gives us actually a chance to, to really have some, some fantastic stuff being made because there is it's kind of wide open and anything is permitted and anything is possible. And it's not just sort of rough uh, course um, quality, which YouTube is mostly right now. It's very rapidly going to, again, go into the area where we have um, the full high quality experience, and Hulu is one of the, the earliest sites that's now giving you a sense of what online video quality can look like, and um, they're trying, again, exploring different models. So here's uh, perhaps, I think, my last um, example of um, the expansion of this um, world into the environment, and that is in the way that we consume it. So, that, so traditionally, in the new media, there was kind of two stances. You were either uh, leaning back in a movie theater and having a story told to you, or you were leaning forward into the screen and you were interacting with it and with the computer. And um, so, so the one where the narrative was paramount, the other one where um, the environment was sort of really what you were engaged in. And I think now there's sort of, we're seeing in, in between, again, this is turning into a continuum rather than a binary polar world. There's everything in between. And we're seeing with some of the games like the Grand Theft Auto, where the, there's, a, there's a narrative going through it and the production values and the intensity and the, and the 
um, attention to that is, is very, very strong. And it kind of gets people through it. And they, they say you can expect to play about 60 hours to, to, to finish the game. So this is kind of like, it's not a 60 hour motion picture, but it's a 60 hours of something that's very related to that and has some of the elements in it. So there is a, a kind of, again, a, a blurring uh, between those medium. And uh, I saw Cloverfield, which is, um, J.J. Abram, Abrams' uh, movie about a monster movie that you don't see the monster, but it really wasn't less of a movie and it was a, a, a ride because it was so immersive and the narrative, again, was, was not really the central aspect. It was more being, being in this world. And so, so there was a sense of it kind of being experience rather than being a story. And um, I think what all this is leading to is that the way in which computers and computation are changing the nature of motion pictures. And there is a, um, a field called computational photography, which is ab about how um, you can do a lot of the things that the eye does with computers. And this is really the crux of what's happening. This is listening to the technology. So this is what, what I'm looking at, is how this te technology can computational photography and filmmaking are changing the technology and how the technology will, will change our culture. So one of the things that we see with computational photography is the fact that um, the traditional way of making a movie is you film lots of scenes on analog or film. You have little linear strips of things and then you have to edit that into a longer narrative story. The, the, the computational process sort of flips that around and it says, well, we can start with kind of a minimum um, uh, amount of a film and we'll just computationally take it apart into its elements and then reassemble that into many different things. So you could actually take a film, extract out the person, which we do with blue screens and green screens, and then reassemble that in, uh, to, to, to make, the, to make the, the, the story that we want. And in some senses, the, the animation, uh, like, like Ratatouille and others, have, have taken this to the, to, to, to the apex, and, and that's what they're doing. They're doing it basically where they make everything, and they're starting with just numbers, and they're reassembling those numbers into the scene that they want. But in fact, even some of the, the live action films um, are to, to a certain, certain sense being animated because they're being they're being constructed and manipulated almost frame by frame, and all the ingredients in those frames, all the layers, are being uh, are, are being generated, and they're they're, they're being assembled in a certain way. And you know, Star Wars being a great example. I mean, the, it looks like it's live action, but it's really not. Uh, you know, the set's not real. The figures aren't real. The lightsabers aren't real. So so everything is is sort of being taking from a few bits and being generated into a film. And, and, and as there's color correction going on, there's actually very few parts of any frame that won't be manipulated in some capacity with, with computers. There's even some new things coming up. There's something called a depth camera. And this is uh, based on a chip called a Z-cam for the Z-dimension. And it's not a stereoscopic 3D. It's actually a single lens camera that has a chip in it that actually measures the speed of light coming back that can tell how far away things are. So it generates a 3D depth image just with a single camera. So you now can make basically 3D images on a cheap webcam. Um, and as that moves into movie cameras, you'll be able to, again, start to layer and unbundle the, the image before you into its parts. So, so what, what you, you want to think, think about, uh, and, and, and already, you know, people who use Avid and Final Cut Pro, they're, they're, they're dealing, dealing with a million different little pieces in making a movie. And all these pieces are becoming more and more elemental. They're becoming, they're, 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 they're being unraveled to smaller and smaller individual primeval elements. And then they're being recombined into uh, the linear narrative story. Okay. And so, so at each step, step we go in the digital adventure towards it, there's, it, it, it unravels these bits more and more down to you know, an object, object that, 
that's a naked object, and then you can add the lighting as you want. You can add the, 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 the location. You can add texture skin. You can change the colors. You can do everything with it. And so you, you end up with a, a kind of uh, a set, a database of, of very small elements. Now, when we think about films, we normally think about the masterpieces, what I would call the handcrafted artesian films, the films that people come here to see. But what I want to kind of remind people is that in, in the great scale of, of motion images, this is, this is a very small little, tiny, tiny small little apex, a little tiny part at the top, that most of it, most of the, of the images in our lives and that we see that we're swamped by, that we're surrounded by, are not those. And, 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 and that base is becoming bigger and bigger and larger and larger. And, larger. and while the, the story will never go away and, the, away and the importance of the story and the narrative driven um, film won't go away, the fact that it's surrounded by a greater and greater ocean of other visual motion pictures influences and has an effect, it has an indirect effect on that. And so, um, what I'm talking about is, is, is in certain senses, the, the rest of the visual world directly. And I, w I make the analogy that this is a little bit like writing. Again, if we think about our lives, uh, even in this darkened theater, of course, there's text up on the screen right now, I see some text back here. There's, you can open up and see printed material. Our lives, we're, we're living in an ocean of text around us. And, we, and there's so much of the written word and the alphabet around us that we don't even see it anymore. But, our, but, we're, but that makes our culture, that's what our culture is based on. And it's everywhere. And we have a lot of tools that we've evolved and skills to, to, to work with that literate culture that, that, that we're swimming in and without, without even perceiving it. We can parse things, we can index them, we have all these ways to search and browse text and manipulate it and annotate things and resequences. And that's just for, for using it, that, that's our response to it. We have all these tools for cut and paste and other things to actually write text. And of course it's ubiquitous, but, but that's an important thing is that we're, we're, we both read it and we write it, and we write a lot of texts for ourselves. A lot of the writing that we do is, is written for the audience of one, which is us. And we're, we're steeped in this environment of, of the written word. And what I'm suggesting is, is that that's where we're going with the visual world, with mo moving pictures, is that it becomes ubiquitous in our culture. And that what we're trying to develop and what we will be developing, what we've just begun to develop, are these tools that allow us to index them and browse them and search them and manipulate them and annotate them. And that, and that the moving image becomes as ubiquitous in our culture as the written word was until now. Okay? So um, I call that the Gutenberg shift. Okay, so we're going to see the Gutenberg shift in the visual world, in, in, in what I call visuality, okay, in, in, in moving pictures. So, you, you saw the Harry Potter movies, when the Daily Prophet you know, he takes out the newspaper and the images on the newspaper are moving. We're going to do that. We have already e-ink. We've seen some of the e-ink in the Kindle and these readers. Eventually, it'll get to the point where we'll have electronic digital ink on uh, a book page, a flexible book page you can turn, or a newspaper. So you get one, you have your favorite newspaper, and it changes all the time. And if you can change the news, it can certainly ha support a moving image on the page. And there'll be moving images on your newspaper. And so the moving image will become part of our, of our literacy. That's already happening. Here's an example of um, si si Seismic, a website where you post um, videos, and the way you comment to the videos on this site is you make another video. So you have videos commenting on other videos, so it's a video conversation. Okay, and that's only possible because it gets easier and easier. You have built-in little, you know, cameras in your laptop and stuff. And so as we make these tools more ubiquitous, that kind of a, a facility for making a video as easy as in typing something, that's where we're going to, that's what we want in a certain sense. 
And so, so what are some, some of the ways, ways in which we can do this, sort of indexing and parsing? One of the problems with, with the moving image, image, the motion images, is that it has a, a penalty, a temporal pen penalty, which means you have to cut, it takes a long time to watch it. I mean, and, and, and like, it takes a, you can have a book or an uh, article, and we have something called the abstract. You can read the abstract of the article. What's the equivalent in film? What's the abstract of the film? Well, how can you browse films? How, uh, you know, how can you search films? And so that's what we're talking about. That's what's happening in the labs right now. Is, and these are some examples of different experiments in trying to summarize, to condense, to, to digest, to, 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 to in some ways abstract um, a, a clip or a frame or a, or a small movie. And so one way is you, uh, we, we see it on YouTube has one way, which is they take the center frame in the exact middle of the clip, and that's what shows up. Like, so, so it gives you some, some idea, but that's kind of elementary. elementary. Here's another one. They took this, this a center slit in all the frames of the images and they can compress those together. That's the one on the top. Then another one is you can just do a little storyboard. You just do every nth frame. You can show that. It's a storyboard. Another one, just other experiments just took, again, slits of, of, the, of the frames and made one image, one standard image. There was a kind of a cubist attempt there. There's, There's another, another one called uh, um, a, a collage, collage of sound still, still, where actually they kind of took all the frames, and this is a pan going across, and they, they kind of just show a little edge of it, and so you, you, you get, get a kind of a collage view of this section of a, of a scene. And there's another one on the bottom, which is a little hard to see, which is almost like a time lapse, where the tripod hasn't moved, and the camera is on a tripod, not moving, so you have all the movement on one still. These are some experiments, experiments in, in trying to do this. this. And here's another, it's called uh, Salient, Salient Still, still. And it's actually, it's actually a company that does this, where they, they compress uh, a, a movie, movie into, into one image. image. And, this and this is, is one, one to my, my most interesting, interesting one, one on MIT Media, Media Lab, Lab, where they, they actually, actually make an extruded volume of an image, I mean, of a motion picture. So you can actually kind of see the, you know, know the, 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 the bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge in different ways, ways or, or you can, can see there's sailboats on the lower left, and there's a crew on a river in the lower right. right. And so, so you, it, it's, it's a, a way, way to begin to get this, this tool, this literary tool that we need to, 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 to browse and abstract motion pictures. pictures. So, so these, these are some of the other ways that we can do that right now. We can have a cover, poster, of a, of a film, film gives you some idea what it is. You can have a storyboard, you can have a slideshow, you can have a collage, extrusion. And there's oh, actually a way you can fast forward. People have been trying to see how fast can you watch a film and still understand it. And it turned out that you can go up to 200 times fast. They can just go by so fast and you still get some like, comprehension of about 30 to 50 percent of what it's about at 200 times. And so, um, or, or you can have, you have a skim, skim or a trailer. trailer. A trailer, trailer is actually, uh, a, you know, a very uh, crafted version of the film. And, and what we, you can imagine is some computational ways to actually make tra trailers automatically out of films. So that's one way. So, so this is, what I'm trying to give you is a sense of how this medium is going in the direction of becoming our new literacy. One, one of the things, things that you want to do is be able to, 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 to annotate things within a film. So, so there actually is software right now that has face recognition. So it can actually, com computer can look at a, uh, a film, a film frame, and say, here are the faces. They can do that now. So what's coming up now is true visual search. So you're actually searching for something right now the way Google search works is it finds the words that are associated with the picture, but it's not actually not looking into the picture, but that's coming. So actually you say, find, find me a rabbit, rabbit and it will actually go and recognize the rabbits in the images, images rather than the ones, ones that were tagged by humans. By humans. And, and so what, what can you do with that? Well, you know, we want to be able to, to right now if you want to, if you want to reference, if you want to link, maybe you could link to a film, maybe you could link to a little clip of a film. It's very hard to link right now to a frame in a film and it's almost impossible to link to something within the frame itself. But well, that's, that's what, what you want to be able to do if you want to have this new visuality. 
you want to be able to link to, you're doing something about fashion, you want to be able to link to bow ties. So you want to be able to bring the hyperlink right into that. Or if you were looking at the Fez, you want to be able to point to it, not just in that one frame, but as it goes over the entire scene, as, it, as it's moving. So it should follow that. And, or else if you were interested in kind of old piano, operate pianos, and you actually wanted to annotate that piano. So those kinds of things within that frame, within the uh, things across frames is, is what we're headed towards. And, uh, uh, you know, doing that, there are, there are again, some experiments that, that are trying to figure out the language and the mechanism that, so we can actually do that annotation as things are moving through and that we're actually pointing to something that's temporal as well as in, in a frame. So all the things that are now kind of out there in YouTube land, sampling and remixing and mashups and appropriation and this new idea of generating things, these are all this part of the new Gutenberg language, this Gutenberg syntax, grammar, for dealing with motion pictures. That's what we're doing. That's what we see happening. And it's this liquidity that's actually the great attraction. A lot of people who were concerned about the file sharing in music and the reason why people were going to the free music were confused because they, a lot of the reason why free music was very important was not because it was for free. That was only part of the story. The main thing that was happening with the free file sharing music was that it was liquid. You could do stuff with it. You could, you could take like an iTunes, you could make your own playlist. You could reconstitute an album. You could take parts of a song and do things with it. You could, you, you can make lists, you can make it into a database. It was that, that fungibility, that liquidity of the parts that was a great attraction. And that's what's happening now in motion pictures, is that we're kind of taking the part and it's now become this sort of very malleable medium. We see things, it's so malleable it actually kind of bleeds over into things like painting. And Photoshop is really fantastic in this sense. It's, it's, some of the things are less of a photograph and more of a painting, and then we say we've seen the same thing happening again in the medium of motion pictures, where it almost can become painterly if you think about 300, the movie 300. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was as if it was painted. It was so graphic, a graphic novel graphic, that it was, in some senses, a kind of, of, of art, painted art. And so in things, we're seeing this thing, and we're also seeing it with text. 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 It used, used to be that, that, that the division, division between, between uh, a frame and, and text was very severe. We didn't melt the two because it was very hard to read things on the TV. It was very, we didn't want to interrupt because you couldn't stop to, 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 to pause to do the things you want with reading. You couldn't go back. And so they were kept separate. But now, when we have a little bit more control and we can do, and the resolution is fine, we can actually bring text into the medium as well. And these are just some examples of a web tutorial and credits on a movie and some um, hip hop um, videos and some DJ stuff where, where text is now part of it. And I think, as we, as we, again, we imagine the Daily Prophet and we imagine the world where these high resolution screens are, th there's no reason why the text should be divorced from motion. Pictures. Why, why, they why they can't, can't be part of it and bleed, bleed over, over into it. it. That's, That's all going to be possible. possible. In fact, that was one of the things we tried at Wired was assuming that the text and the still picture shouldn't be separate. And we, we've already seen them come together. And I think what's happening now is the motion picture is going to do the same thing. So I, I call this TV that you can read. And we see that in commercials and movie credits and stuff. And I think we'll see more of, of that. Basically, motion pictures that you read. Again. Maybe it's not happening a whole lot in the story-driven narrative Hollywood films, but it's going to happen a lot in the rest of this huge, huge thing of visuality. And I'm saying that, you know, just as we made, I mean, one of the biggest movements in our culture was the move from oral, oral cultures, orality to literacy. Gutenberg, I mean, the, the impact of the printing press and literacy and the word and the written text and books made Western civilization, that, that's, that was the foundation. And we're going basically through the same thing right now, another transition from the written word into this visuality world. And that's a big thing. That's, that's really what we're talking about. And 
as this saying before, it, it, it's, it's kind of combining a little bit of text, text and it'll have plenty of music in it. And so it's audio and oral in that sense. There's no real film without soundtrack. And so there's also another level in which we actually can take that layering of information films and project it on top of the world that we see. It's called augmented reality through our little glasses. And that's yet another way in which these things are combined. And some people call that the metamedia, meaning that's the larger media, or even, I like this word, the intermedia. It's the media of all media. Okay, so this intermedia is sort of really what this new visuality is really about. And so let me just tell you briefly in my remaining few minutes the environment in which this intermedia is happening. So first of all, this intermedia is a copy machine and anything that can be copied will be copied and once it's copied it will flow like super distribution on wires and never be eradicated. So there is this the superconductivity of the copy, where, where the copies, copies become, become so abundant, so abundant that, that some people call it a free economy. And so people are really concerned about, you know, things, things being free, free and how do we make movies when things are free? free. And what, what do we do? do? So the business, business model is a big, big, big factor in this shift. shift. Well, well, what, what happens, happens is when you have the superabundance of copies and, 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 and they're really worth not very much, the only things that have value are things that can't be copied. So, so what, what kind, kind of things can't be copied? copied? Well, well, immediacy. If you, if you wait, wait long enough, you will get a copy of this film, film but if you, you want, want it right now, as soon as it comes out, you can pay, and you will pay, and people will pay. They'll pay for the immediacy of getting it now. Or you have personalization. Yeah, you can eventually get the soundtrack or the Coldplay new album, but if you want it customized or personalized to the acoustics of your living room, okay, you'll pay. Well, what about um, authenticity? If you buy a piece of software, if you, you can get free software anywhere, but you're really concerned about that. You really want to make sure it's the authentic version of it. It's worth the while to you to pay a little bit more for making sure that that's the right one. Or if it's a, if it's a uh, you know, maybe there's a knockoff band that does something, but you want the authentic one. So you, so you can be willing to pay and because authenticity cannot be copied. It has to be generated. So this personalization has to be generated for you. It can't be copied. So. Patronage, Patronage is another one. one. Lots, Lots of times, times people want, want to have a relationship with the creator. They don't, they don't care, care about the copy. They want to be able to, they want to patronize. They want, they want to support the creator so they will pay in that sense. And then there's interpretation. So this is the old, the old um, kind of joke about software. Software is free, manual is $1,000. Okay? So to interpret, to, to actually to, to maintain it, to use it, to figure out how to use it, you pay. The copy is free you're going to pay for this interpretation. interpretation. Accessibility is another one. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, it's all free, free but you can't, can't find it. it. Yeah. All right, well, well you'll pay for someone to direct, direct you through, through to, to bring it forward, to, to have access to it 24 hours, seven days a week, whatever, whatever it is. So, so the copy is free, but the accessi accessibility is cost. Or embodiment. And we see this with singers. Copy is free, but if you want to see me perform, you want, I'm, I'm going to embody, embody the music. music. Or, or, yeah, you can get a, the text, text PDF is free, but if some people like the artifact, the embodiment of the, of the book, they're going to pay for the book even though they can get a copy of free. And findability, I think I mentioned that already. It's not quite the same as accessibility, but it's very similar. So these are generatives. These, these are things that are, aren't uh, copyable. They have, to, they, they have to be made at the time and situation. And so therefore, those are the things that have become most, most powerful in this economy. So the only scarcity, really, in this abundance of copy is, is things that dwell and focus around attention. And a lot of people are concerned about the new media economics, but I can say very, 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 very surely that wherever attention flows, money is going to flow later. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we see happening right now. People don't read newspapers, and so they're reading online, so the money for advertising is moving online. And the same thing will happen wherever attention is generated. And stories have a fantastic power to hold our attention. So this is a world in which we have all the screens going out into our environment, piling up. And what's interesting about these screens is, is, is that all the, they're all connected in some ways. They're all online more and more, even our phones are connected to each other. And it's, it's not, not too, too hard, hard to imagine, imagine that, that all these screens, screens 
form. All, all these computers these and all these gadgets, gadgets form one, one large machine. machine. As, as if, if this is just, or my, my cell phone, is just a little transistor in a larger computer. computer. Okay? When, when all, all these things are connected, connected and what's, what's happening, happening is everything we make is being connected, connected online. online. And so, so we're, we're basically taking, taking all these things and they're forming the little parts of a very large computer of one machine. machine. And it's all so running on the web. And, and basically, basically if it's, it's not on the web, it's not there. there. And, and all, all these screens, screens really windows, windows looking into the same machine. machine. They're all, they're basically they're all, they're all looking, we're all contacting the same one machine. And that is now being called cloud computing, which means that a lot of times in the future, we're probably not going to do our computing on this machine. It's probably just going to communicate with the computing that's done elsewhere, where the, our movies are stored and our, our music is stored, and, and we won't even have to carry it around. It'll just be a little bit of an interface, like the cell phone, to everything in the cloud. And eventually, in the goodness of time, every single bit that we produce will go onto the web. And, and I, like I like to think, think of the web service as this black hole that's just sort of absorbing everything. It can come, come down, down to it. So, so every, every little gadget we make, we make is sort of being webized, and it's on the web, and it's not on the web, it doesn't count. And so, so we, we have, have this thing, thing where it becomes the center, it becomes, the center. It becomes, it becomes what, what, what happens. happens. It becomes the, the platform that everything is done on. And, and every, every little, little thing that we make, everything in that picture, for instance, will have, beginning to have a little chip, as smart as an ant, but no smarter, dumb as an ant. But, but it's, it's, it's connected, connected. And, and that makes, makes like a high, that makes something smarter than the parts. And, and so, so everything, everything is being connected, connected. Everything. everything. Literally, Literally, we have like almost the internet of things. things. And, we and we have, have all, all these, these, right, right now, now, we have, have all these words and documents linked, linked to each other, but we're going to do it with visual motion, motion pictures. pictures. All, all the parts of motion pictures will be connected to each other in this new literacy. So, so the, the parts, parts won't, won't be separate, separate though. though. The, and here, let me, you know, it's sort of like, like a database. database. It's like the, the worldwide, worldwide database, database, the worldwide database, database of things and film parts. parts. And there's, and there's actually a guy, guy Lev Manovich at UC San, San Diego, who calls this database, database cinema. cinema. So, so, so you, you kind of unravel everything into a database, and then you reassemble it from the parts. You have a billion, million parts. And, and actually, actually, what's, what's interesting, interesting is those parts don't have to be parts that you made. made. It can be other, other people's parts. parts. That's, That's the important, important thing. thing. Okay? okay? So, so movies become like software, software, excuse me, software, software programs, programs that you compute, compute from your database of parts. parts. We, we all, all possible, possible shots, shots of everything, everything and every lighting that will be in this database. database. And again, again you'll be using things that you don't necessarily make yourself. When we write a novel, a novel, we're, we're using, using words, words that are common, common to everybody. To everybody. I mean, we, we may make, make up a few words, but most of the words are just coming from words that are out there. there. We're, we're using, using other people's words and we're recombining them. Right, right now, now Flickr, I just looked, there's 151,000 shots of the Golden Gate Bridge. Bridge. There's, there's every possible shot. In fact, you don't need to take a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. It has been done in every possible way. Okay. Now, now, right, right now, now they're, they're not, they're tied to this, we don't have a really good way of finding what we want, but that's what I'm talking about, those tools that are coming. But imagine, imagine everything covered like the, and not just in a still photograph, but actually a little movie done by you. It's impossible. I mean, here we have the Google 3D warehouse. It's not just the, the things that we exist, but there's also these wireframe 3D models all for free. This is just the complete, uh, Shanghai, Shanghai waterfront, waterfront buildings were all done. done. I mean, uh, every city in the world, you can get the full 3D rendered, ready-to-use version for your film. It's already done. That's out there. And eventually, every house will, will come that way, too. So by 2010, there's going to be 4 billion camera phones in the world. And those are 4 billion eyes recording everything. And they'll be in high definition. And that, and that will be going, going into the database, database the cinema database. database. And, and you, this Time, Time Magazine you, the, what I call the Wikipedia you, will be sharing, you'll be sharing, you'll be sharing all the stuff. stuff. And so we'll be we'll making, making films from all, all this stuff, stuff together. together. And sometimes, sometimes a lot of people will be making films together. together. That, that is where we're going. going. So, so like, like words, words in a book, book these, these parts, parts are going to be reassembled and remixed and then read co-generated by others, and then annotated and quoted and owned by us. So everybody will sort of be making films in that motion pictures in that sense of, 
of that's just something we're doing. And in some sense, we're kind of making one big movie. movie. It's one, one big, big movie, movie well, you know, basically all these parts, parts one big movie, movie with six billion, billion edits. <laughs> okay, and, and that's, that's sort of what, what we're going, going to. And, and a lot of people, people think, well, it's impossible. impossible. You're just making this up. I mean, this is like craziness, you know, how, it's so, so far away. Way, However, I want to remind, I mean, just one little thing as I end here, one little thing. This is the web, okay, the web. Let's change our lives, all the things we have. I mean, it's only 5,000 days old. Yeah, the web is, is, is hardly 5,000 days old. All, all this stuff, stuff Google, Google, I mean, everything, everything phone books, books Flickr, Flickr we can, it's, it's all less than 5,000 days old. old. And, and I was, was around when we started, started talking, talking about it, and people, people said, said basically, basically it, there's, there's not, not enough money, money in the world to make the web happen. happen. <laughs> no, there isn't. It was, it was impossible. It was literally it was impossible. It was inconceivable. It just is impossible. All this stuff could not happen. There's not enough money to actually make it work. But here it is. It's, it's impossible, impossible that happened. happened. And so, so I, think I think one of the things, things that this is telling us is, is that we have to get, get better, better and believe in the impossible. <laughs> okay? okay? Wikipedia, Wikipedia was impossible. impossible. There it is. So, so what's, what's going to happen in the next 5,000 days? days? Well, well the, main the main thing that's happening is that, is that we're, we're moving from, from being people of the book to people of the screen. And right now you're looking at this little screen here. I have some pictures and there's text. It's in a movie theater. It's part of this new culture of the, of the intermedia, intermedia of the screen. screen. And, and I, I thank, thank you for your attention. attention. So, so if we, we could, could rate, rate.